Rabbi. Midnight Rabbi. What is a midnight rabbi? Midnight no, rabbi, the vein. Finished before midnight. He used to have a job. Yeah, he used to have a job in the vein. Yeah, well, turn into nothing. Alright, go, go, go. Keep the boys occupied from 12 to 4. No, thank God I, I, first things first, you have to, sorry it's all right, you have to give, you're, you're a good looking dude, yeah, no, not live stream, you have to give, I'm not doing all that kind of stuff on this trip, I'm just keeping it chilled, I'm obligated to give a little bit of credit to the, where credit's due, as you used to say back in the day, where the credit's due, due, no, due, yeah, thank you man, so what's credit due? Credit due is to Ari and to Nuhi, because definitely they're the elders amongst us. Elders? Yeah. I'm not going to ask them how old they are now, but we definitely had a relationship. I remember meeting Ari a long time ago, and it was a small little centre. Actually, it was actually bigger, actually, then. But, uh, <laughs> sorry to bring that up. But it, <laughs> it was like this big place, clubhouse, club girls, club this, club that. It was very impressive, and Ari, thank God, is a role model for me, because he's someone who has persisted in the most important part of the Jewish people, which is you guys. That's, that's, that is respect. Respect is due. Because the young men, teenagers of our generation is where the biggest, biggest battleground is for all of us, including myself. And I was the midnight rabbi, so I know it. I mean, was. Maybe I still am. But the concept of being a young guy in this generation, being a teenager, you know, like respect to you guys, you're the soldiers of our generation. You know, when I was a teenager, it was like, you know, you go to like a, a video store and the worst you could do is be a, get away with pretending to be 18 and get, a, you know, a porno or something. That was about as best, best as you could get. Now it's like, I don't need to go to any store. I don't need to pretend anything. It's like, it's inf- I, I could do whatever I want, whenever I want however I want and there's no one going to stop me and no one's going to know and everyone even if they know I don't even care so it's like a generation where it's like within the short my short lifetime things that were like difficult to do are you know in your face whether you want it or not so when you're a guy in this generation I'm being very frank with everybody yeah if you know what Frank you know who Frank is good guy Frank Bruno but um, being very straight yeah I'm being very straight because being straight's unusual. So, um, <laughs> got a bit of humour. Got to have it. That was a good joke. Actually, quite oh, being unusual. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. I'm going to try not get too bent off course, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, wow, I've really lost all my political correctness. I'm like, I'm fired already. You know. No more rabbi job. Keep it going, so, <laughs> and now you know why the rabbis don't employ me. You know, you get you get the point. Yeah. So that's why Ari asked me to come. Actually, funny enough. No, but the, really, what it comes comes down to when you have a place like Rabbi Lehman and Rabbi Chizuk, I have to give them respect seriously, because and Rabbi Lolu and no, really, these guys are doing what you know, you guys need, and what I need is we need you guys to succeed. That's what it's about. Like, seriously, let's get down to, like, goals here, including our friend who's been around a while, but longer than some of you guys. We all need to succeed in life. And what does it mean to succeed? Like, how do we define success, you know? Pass on our knowledge to the youngest. What's your name? Mr. Boyer. Mr. Boyer is saying passing our knowledge on to the next generation. So I do have a whole brand I'm busy with called Amuna is Our Future. The future is very important, like children, education, the next generation. But uh, there's another way of looking at it, which I agree with you, by the way, but I'll just, it's good to think of other ways also. A rabbi once said, very cleverly, his name's actually Zechariah Wallerstein, and he said once said in his class, I think you hosted him one time? No, I'm sure you have. So he once said this idea, like, when does it stop? It's always about the next generation. And what about this generation? What about me? What about the father now, not the next generation? Like, where's this idea? Oh, oh it's, I'm doing it for my child. I'm doing it for him. But like, what about you? You know, that's a big principle that we have to remember that, you know, it's important about the next generation, but really it starts here. It starts now. It starts with you. 
the next generation don't come for not for you guys, you know? Like, you are building the next generation. So really, it comes down back to you. It's not just about your children. So we've got to take responsibility for where we're at right now, who we are right now, and, and make a plan a little bit how we're going to succeed, how we're going to have a good life. You know, so one of the things I'm very into talking about is being effective living, you know, like using your time in this world effectively. And the world is all about not using your time effectively. Like you can literally binge Netflix endlessly. I mean, back in the day when I was in, in the Vey, like the Vey days, remember, they, it was like a big deal. A guy would have a laptop. Just picture it, how it used to be in the old days. And this is not so long ago. He'd have a laptop and he'd have a drive. And he's like... You know, ich bin a boche. He was like a chassidish guy, yeah, from a chassidish neighborhood. And suddenly he's in the vase somehow. He got there. He managed yeah. to crash enough cars. Like, and when I mean cars, it was his father's car. And he, his father was like the Rosh Shiva of like the biggest Shiva in America. And he did it on Friday night in front of all the guests into the house. Oh yeah. God. So he, that's how he made his. That's how he made his way into the vey. Yeah. So that was his like you know entrance. You know like he had to do something really crazy on drugs as well and alcohol and a few other things with a girl or next to him. No, I'm joking. That that part I don't know. But who was next to him? I don't know. But he did that. That did happen. So even now, frightens me. So he's yeah. I I agree. You haven't met my father, but I agree. Yeah, he's the same kind of guy. So. I never touch my well, I wouldn't touch my dad. No. I, mean, I can as well. I was scared. And I'm, I'm like coming well, up like, to 40 and he still never let me drive in his car. Well, so we, we had my older brother, my older brother driven yeah. my dad's car. But I mean, this guy was not allowed to drive his father's car and it was Shabbat and it was a Rosh Hashiva and everyone saw it and he was underage. Like, everything was going wrong at this moment. So, oh, I was known as the Midnight Rabbi. I, truth is, I just wanted to see Nuki once in a while. That was really what it came down to. But... What were you doing in the bed? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, let me leave the phone. Poor guy. Like so now look, <laughs> this guy's sitting there. <laughs> He's got his laptop. <laughs> this Hasidish guy. I mean, we actually, this guy happened to be was more yeshivish, but he was sitting next to the Hasidish guy who gave him the drive, and it was this drive. And every single movie up until 2004 or whatever, whenever it was, 2008, when was it? 2009, I don't even remember anymore. It was about 10 years ago, so about 2009, let's say. Had everything at Barak Chef, that was Netzach already. So, he was in the Vey. Oh, he was a t- student. Yeah. He was in Kesha, right? No? Benji Isaac. Yeah, I want to talk about Benji also. I miss Benji. Oh, good old Gingy Spurs fan. So, uh, anyway, so we got, we got to Neve days, and he's sitting there with the laptop, with the drive. Remember those things, drives? You know, now you have clouds and whatever. But the drives, yeah? Like, and I, clouds can be for other reasons also, but, you know, hot, hot box kind of clouds. But he's sitting there with the, with the drive, yeah? And the worst thing is it's coming out of the machines. That's what freaks me out now. Everyone's smoking these machines. I mean, are you crazy? I was with my boys last night, and you know, they're like in their also late 30s, and they're asking me, you know, Ellie, you want to toke? I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He says, yeah, this is like, you know, you know the, the e-cigs, but like with the weed. The wax pens. Yeah. 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 And my boys, the other boys are like, oh, wow, this is good, man. And I'm like, I'm married, I've got kids, you know, I meant to be like a respectful guy, you know, I'd ruined that already by the way I've spoken, but I meant to be a respectful guy, you know, like, so, you know, I, I got to like maintain, like I've been clean 20 over 20 years, thank God, like I think I'm going to continue, thank you bro, so I didn't take it, but the point is, back to the, the laptop and the drives, we don't have that anymore, now, now it's Netflix, you can binge it Netflix, like, honestly, I'll be straight with you guys, I went on to Netflix, yeah, Honestly, in my own house, holy home, rabbi, all this stuff. Went onto Netflix, got addicted to suits. And everyone's watched suits. Got addicted to suits. I literally wasted a month of my life. I, as soon as they asked me for money, I said, no way, because I'm Jewish. Yeah? That's why they asked me, why won't you pay? I said, I'm Jewish. I said, I've got another credit card. I'm going to go use it. I did. I really wrote that. I'm Jewish. So now you know why they're anti-Semitic, because they got the real answer finally. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't sign up. And I bet the main reason was because I literally wasted a month. And plus, once Mike, who everyone knows who Mike is in suits, once he left the show, I was like... I know, it's just not suits. It's not the same, no. I know. 
So I couldn't be bothered. He knows. I couldn't be bothered with it anymore. But really what I'm getting at is I literally wasted a month of my life. So wasting time is the key of this generation. This is the key to not life, not a real life. And this is the biggest challenge. Like I made this whole concept of living effective and I said, what is the biggest way serving other gods or, you know, being distracted, what, or being like pulled away from what real Judaism is, is distractions and wasting time. I mean, there's a famous actor, I'm a bit dating myself here, but it's a good line. Woody Allen said it. You know, you had Shias Taub, he quotes this quote. You know, he's a good rabbi, Shias Taub. If you ever have anything like real burning question, write him a letter, send him an email. I've met him a few times, very special rabbi. He, I read his article every week with my wife in Ami. What's the letter? It's a life changing. Yeah, I mean, the email, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. text him, <laughs> WhatsApp him, you know. Netflix. I don't think he has a Snapchat, uh, whatever it's called, a Snapchat, or Stitcher, or Instagram? any of that stuff. But Instagram, I don't think Twitter? he's there also. Twitter, tweet, tweet. Nah, you you cool. leave that to Trump. So now, what <laughs> yeah. happens, yeah, is. I'm, I'm thinking about this whole thing, this concept with Shai's Taub. And what does Woody Allen say? Woody Allen, good quote. He said, God is a distraction. Now, he, he got it a little bit wrong because it's actually we're distracted from God, but actually got it right because if Shai's Taub quotes it, it must be got it right. I don't really quote it. But the idea of what does it mean, God is a distraction? Because we, Torah is so powerful that um, obviously God brought the Torah to the Jews. There's a rabbi here. Okay, so now the idea of that deep connection that Torah like distracts us from the world that's a positive way of understanding it but then there's also the other way of understanding that connection with God is really what it's all about like I just spoke in uh, Rabbi Tawil's program <laughs> oh, yeah exactly the whole point <laughs> no it's exactly what I spoke about and that whole thing of like blowing your nose of just like like really loudly in the middle of a class it was like all about connection and focus and relationship and that's like everything the world isn't yeah exactly <laughs> everything good job everything the world isn't is 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 not you're just disconnected like you're just not you're not in it so like i'll give you an example yeah there's nothing worse for a woman i mean you guys know what women are yeah i'm not talking to the your kids here, they're straight or not uh, well, straight. No, we got some good ideas. No, a woman wants connection. She, the worst thing you can do is say, "Here, take my credit card." Discipline. No, truth is, they love that. But the, 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 honestly, though, the real, a real woman, a woman who honestly is in touch with it, the kind of woman you really want to marry, not someone who's just going to spend all your money. Yeah, a woman who's actually well, going to. They're going to do that anyway. But the point is, at least, at least there should be some like purpose to it. All. So of the spending the money. So what, what you want is you want a relationship, and that's what she really wants, much more than you, honestly. Yeah? Like the famous joke by uh, Y.Y. Jacobson, another good guy. Got to bring you bring him here? Yeah, he came. Not yet. Didn't come, you got to bring Y.Y. Jacobson here. He's yeah, top he's speaker, coming. not this second-class hat going on over here right now, but real speaker. Yeah, he, he, he says like a good joke. He says like this. You have, you have a guy going out with a girl. You know what? I'm not like... Scaring you, yeah. I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I got. <laughs> so, so, sorry, man. Didn't mean to embarrass you. Seriously, I'll ask so you're talking about straight in bed. Straight in bed. So now, so like the guy, so the guy and the girl going out, and who's doing all the listening? Girl, good job. Good job, Lolly. The girl's doing all the listening, yeah? Because guys like to, you know, you know, man, I'm talking big. And the girl's like, wow, wow, yeah. yeah. And then you get married, yeah? And who does all the listening? Guy. <laughs> well, he pretends he's doing the listening, but he's supposedly, yeah? Now, what happens then? They've been married a while. I've been married almost 18 years. Respect. How long? Ari, how long? Even more respect. Nuki. 17 Respect, oh, come yeah. on. We're, we're like yeah. achievers here. Like, yeah. That in itself... Coming up to 14 or 15. Well, that in itself, in this generation... <laughs> that, your wife, like, yeah. that is like an achievement. Exactly. Now, who's doing all the listening now, married guys? You're doing the... She's doing... No, you actually doing the listening. This is why I don't think I'm getting married. I'm not going to listen. Who's doing all the... It's true. But who's doing all the listening? <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Almost. No, there's, 
kids are usually listening. kids are usually doing a runner at that point. Yeah, Who's doing a listen? Not, they're on you generally. Who? The neighbours. Come on, you don't. <laughs> I, yeah, that's the joke. Yeah. yeah England is not I know thick walls and you know, like I'm in Israel with thick walls. People thin living with each other. Cats, but you go to camps, or you, once in a while you actually encounter another human being outside in the other building. No, <laughs> it does happen. The so in Israel they hear everything. It's crazy. Yeah. So you've got to make sure your neighbours are somewhat shout. normal, otherwise <laughs> you don't sleep much. You know, you everyone go? shouts. Yeah. <laughs> I live with like Ofshim and Novi. <laughs> So, but the idea is there's meant to be this relationship. There's meant to be this like connection where you actually are listening to someone. So I know myself and you know, honestly, like if we're going to get down to like something a bit serious. Elo, Rosh Hashanah, this whole like heavy thing coming up. Yom Kippur. So I tell you one thing. I tell it to the guys tonight at Railway to Will. You know, I, hope, I think they got it. I think, you know, I felt like I was listened to and it was a good feeling. And that's the point I'm saying. When you're really listened to, like all of you have your thing. Like when someone you meet, like say Ari, or someone that actually really listens, not like these pretending people, but people that actually listen and care, like they're genuine. That's why they're such, you know, special people. They actually care. They're genuine. And you guys probably are also. I don't know you guys yet, but imagine, like you seem like you're listening. So like you really want to listen, like you really want to hear the voice of that other person that going through that thing or going through that struggle and that moment, that is what Hashem's doing during, like, the show is there just to, like, signify, like, you know, not that you're deaf, but, like, the idea that you're, you're actually being listened to and he's listening and it's a relationship. Something's <laughs> happening over here. It's not, you know, it's, this, this is a real live you know, event going on. Like, there's chauffeurs, you know, like, you go to, I don't know if you guys go to things like Tomorrowland. I hope you don't, yeah? But like that kind of crazy rave, like DJs, like everything, <laughs> fire, lights. That's really what's happening in Judaism. That for me was the only way I'd be through. If it was a bunch of boring old men going like this and, you know, and all these covered up people and crazy machines, I would not have chosen this path, trust me. I, I was in the top of that world and I didn't need this. I chose this path because I saw like the Tomorrowland, but in Olam Haba style, like Ju- Judaism live, energized. Like power, energy, people who are like on fire. It's real. It's it's it affects you on the deepest level. Like this is like powerful, impactful. It takes over your like whole being. So that was like the Judaism I was looking for. And if I would have been this boring stuff that I grew up with in United or whatever it was, not putting them down, but that's what my my experience was as a kid. Yeah. So I've I, for me it was like this is the most like unspiritual thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna go <coughs> to India or something, you know. And I didn't end up going to India. I'll tell you what happened. I went to a store before I got to India. I went to a store in Camden and I was looking for every other religion other than Judaism. Obviously, like I said, it was like boring. So I'm looking around and I see this book in the middle of this store, spirituality, you know, self help books, you know, this is in the nineties, so it was a little bit less, but there was all that whole still industry was still growing and every other religion, you know, Buddhism and Islam and, you know, and all the different spiritualities, like this Celestine prophecy, I don't know if you ever heard of this stuff, and like all this like, you know, aura light stuff, and nowadays mindfulness, you know, all this stuff that's out there. And I walked into this store and I saw a book, Jewish Meditation by Arya Kaplan. I didn't know who he was, never heard of any rabbis, they meant nothing to me. But I, I went in, bought it, because I could, it can't be there's something spiritual in Judaism. That I never heard about. Never, no, no one ever communicated. There was, you know, my father for sure not. Like, no one ever talked about spiritual Judaism, especially not the reformed rabbi. You know, he, he looked a bit like the dark emperor, so it was more like, no, he looked seriously. But the one who permitted me was standing there, like, you know, Eli, you stay with the dark side. And like, literally, and I was like, I'm getting out of here. So this is like, this is messed up. You know? <coughs> anyway, so, um, and I did get out of there. I had nothing to do with Judaism for like a bunch of years. So I bought it, and I went to university, and I read it, honestly, from cover to cover, and I actually thought about what it was writing, and I was like, no way. Judaism is spiritual. I didn't know that. Yeah? I went to Sfat, Judaism is spiritual. I went to the Kotel, Judaism is spiritual. Like, wow. Like we, and I don't, I don't mean like pretend spiritual, like real, like life, like energy, like power, like all the dyna- dynamics you're looking for, you know, on a high or whatever you imagine's out there. It was in Judaism. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like a whole big switcheroo. Like what? Me being Jewish is actually relevant and there's something like authentic and powerful here. 
you know, like I can actually have a real relationship with a woman and not just a one night stand. I can have like a real relationship with God and it's not like going to mean I'm like part of some cult and they're going to like own my bank account. Like this is actually legit. You know, like it was like a real mind changer because I met a lot of people claiming and they were pointing to themselves. But like now I actually met the real thing, like God himself, like not talk to me like a prophet, but it was like, this is real. This something's happening here. So that is what I would suggest, like on a simple level for each of us on a real way for a little moment, if we can do it, squeeze it out during these special days coming up. It's just try Allow yourself. It's really to do with you, nobody else. No, not to do with Ari, not to do with me, not to do with your mom, your dad, your, your brother, or the teacher that would, who knows did what. Like, it, seriously, it's not, it's not to do with anybody. This is between you and your soul and God. Can you have a, an intimate moment? Seriously. That's so lame. Yeah. No, I like that. That was a good reaction. Can you have that intimate moment where that experience is not there? Can you have that moment? where you are actually, you know what? I'm actually going to talk to you, God. I'm actually going to face you for one minute. You know what? All this standing in shul, I know there's loads of words I need to say and all this stuff, but I'm actually going to think about you're the king and I'm going to crown you on my life. You know what? You actually knew what you were doing better than I did. And you know what? I'm actually going to have a relationship with you this year. You know what? I'm actually going to accept your will for five seconds. Maybe I want to go back to everything else afterwards but I'm not going to be distracted for this minute and I'm going to be focused and I'm going to have a relationship with you for a little minute and that if you could do that for that one minute even if it's one minute literally or less even could even mean less you know because things are moving quick now you know I was saying to the guys tonight Robert Will if you go to a, watch a movie from 20 years ago or even more they had like the further back you go they had long movie scenes you guys don't know about this because you probably haven't watched unless you've watched old movies. I grew up watching old movies because I loved, especially black and white, they're the best. But like, they actually had moments where you were actually just looking at the guy, like feeling emotion and it was slow and it was a process and there was a, a, an experience. Now it's like you go watch a movie, especially the action ones, they're the worst, where it's just like, like every, t- every preview, every, everything's like, just like... Like sugar, like ADHD, like hyper, sh- sugar hyper. Like it's like, Wah! and like you know, you can't even like pause for a second to like even like feel anything, think anything. It's just like, Wah! and that's like that's like how we're getting like impacted by our phones and everything. I'm including myself. Like I'm 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 running a social media site, like hundreds of thousands of followers, and and I've got it on my head. Even one now, I'm in Israel, and you know, like. It's, it's like nuts because there's hundreds of thousands of people that, and they want to get hold of you. You like the guy managing the site, and they want this and they want that, and other people want to use the site, and they want that, and you're like, Woo! you start going mad. And like, you know, I'm also booking artists, you know, because in Israel you got to hustle. So I'm booking artists, and then like, listen, black, and I got this guy, and this musician, that musician, and this place, and they want to make a show. The Zusha was hitting me up. I need a venue for, for you know, for this Sukkot, and I, this was just now, and a few hours ago, speaking to the manager of Zusha, a well known Jewish band, and I'm helping them out. And I, and everyone's like hitting you up you know Ari like we're trying to talk about coming here tonight but that's like within 50 other things going on yeah forget about having kids and blah blah blah, blah, blah. you're going like you're going like out your head off your head so now you're standing Rosh Hashanah and you say shut up alright no more phones just give me a break please I need to be a human being for one minute Yes, I came into this world. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a phone. This phone does not own my life as much as it wants to. I'm a human being. Uh, I, you know, I even have feelings. You know, like I actually care about something, and you know, I don't have to answer you. Leave me alone. And you can have a little bit of separation. It might feel a little bit anxious for a moment, but just take a break. You know, like just give me a break from this this like manipulation going down here, and let me just like be a person for a minute. And I can stand on Shana or Shabbat or any other time where you disconnect to reconnect, and I can just block off these distractions. Just have a moment with God, a moment with my soul, a real moment in time. And I'm telling you, like for as a husband, like and a father, when you do that, it's amazing. You actually start to live for a minute. And your children are like, wait a minute, where's the phone? And they're like waiting for you to like, you know, to go like this in front of their face. You know, take the phone and go, get out of my face. I'm busy, you know, more important than you. I'd like to just say to them, you know what? <coughs> this phone, I'm, you're more important. And they're like, really? You actually really think I'm more important than the phone? Prove it. You like start like having withdrawals and try. They're like, 
Daddy, you're right. You know, like, no, I don't need to. There's someone trying to get hold of me. I'm like, but I'm here for you. I want to go play football. Let's play football. And you're like, yeah, okay. You know, like the phone's like in your pocket every so on. And you're like, but you know, to just say, F, you know, phone, leave me alone. Seriously. No, just leave me alone. I want to talk to you, God. I want to talk to you, friend. I want to be actually in your room. Like, you are a bunch of teenagers now who are actually sitting here and listening. And you're not like, I be, I, I, one of the reasons why I gave up being a rabbi, and I, forgive me, God, but I did. Like, in terms of like, you know, doing it as a job in yeshiva with a Gemara Shia and a Musa Shia and all this stuff that rabbis do. And I stopped doing it because I watched the generation, like, Get more, like more and more into this, and I, and the yeshivas weren't able to really in this yeshiva keep the phones out of the room, and I was literally just messaging them the whole shit. That was my shit. It was like, come on guys, where are you? You know, Facebooking and getting them finding them there, WhatsApping and like, come on guys, you need to. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not teaching anything. I'm not doing it. I'm not even talking to the guy because the guy he's completely gone somewhere else. Like I walked into the room at night and they'd be like lying there like with the phone like asleep with the phone in their hand I'd be like come no, on you know like you know this is nuts you know like, and I was just thinking to myself like am, am I wasting my time you know because I want to you know I also need to support my family I've got other things to do so what's the answer I wasn't one it's never a waste of time but two Ari Nuchi they haven't given up yeah they haven't given up on you they haven't given up on me they let me come here I don't know why but they let me come here yeah so the point is no, but the point is because there's a, there's a point to this whole discussion that we're having right now because, you know, I'm not just talking to myself, I hope, that we're, we're actually, like, remembering that Rosh Hashanah, Yom Zichron, Hashem is saying, you know, each one of us, I don't know all your names yet, but each one, each person, you're important, I'm making you another year of life, I'm looking at you, and you know what, I'm going to take the best moment you have in Rosh Hashanah, the best moment you have on Yom Kippur and the best moment on Shana Rabba and the best moment on Hanukkah and all these special times in the year and that's how I'm going to remember you that's how I'm going to make this new year to come because he loves us that much that's how he does it he doesn't take the moment where you're outside half the time and not interested and you're bored you don't want to suddenly you just have this good moment and you're like wait a minute I actually feel connected I actually feel a little bit spiritual for a minute yeah I feel like there's some something happening here I'm having a moment of connection. And you shouldn't think too much into it, just allow it to be. That's a very important rule in mindfulness nowadays. You should allow yourself to just be in that moment and just appreciate a moment of freedom from all the noise and enjoy it. And be blessed with that merit that you touched your soul. You had a moment of connection. You should be blessed. Please go with a beautiful year. And I can't wait to see you all next time. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it.